being a female rapper and having to stand up for other women in hip hop is really important to me. My name is Shady and I am an MC from London. I rap, I make music, I tour and perform all over the world. You know when you're repressing, facing all your pain When you get a minute's break and start crying on the train Cause everything that's happened just flashes in a minute And you recognise your grief but cannot picture yourself in it I'm also a youth mentor so I run rap and poetry workshops for young people I curated the first ever all-female hip-hop festival called Queens of Art in 2019. My parents are both from Iran, so I'm fully Iranian. So actually, Farsi was my first language, even though I was born and raised here. Beautiful. Life's a balance, so they tell us keep it perfect. Way down by the pressure, so I'm sorry it's not working. Trying to give thanks and pray you're feeling blessed. My dad and my mum split up when I was really, really young. Um, so when he left when I was six, I was actually a bit relieved because I was just so tired and a bit traumatised from just seeing all the fights. So it kind of ended up it being my mum and me for ages, just me and her alone. And, you know, my mum was adapting to moving here from Iran and um, just kind of learning the way of life here. And it was quite difficult for her being a single mother with me. And then my grandma soon came over to help and my granddad. So I was raised by my mum and my grandma, my granddad. We all lived together in the same flat. And um, I really loved being raised by them. Um, I honestly learned so much about Persian poetry and music from my granddad. Me and him were really close. We used to kind of communicate over playing backgammon. He taught me how to play rummy and backgammon and like card games and solitaire. <laughs> Remember things you could have had. Harsh times seem with dark eyes. It's a far cry, our hearts die to balance all the good and bad. I just was really intrigued by stories and moral stories and poetry so I kind of just used to keep myself busy and write write scripts and write little short stories and be in my own world. My mum was obsessed with books so literally every single day after school we would walk down to Hornsey Library and my mum would just sit there and like just jam there and read and I would just go into my own world. <laughs> I was like really into uh, Narnia and Babysitter's Club and the Goosebump books and like just just such a variety of just going into different worlds. I loved words and stories. I was obsessed with them. So kind of my love of like words and poetry started from that. And my mum said that anywhere we would go, I would always have a pen and paper with me. I just used to sit in the corner by myself and write. Things I've been looking up, I can't really complain. Though I still couldn't write for weeks, I wasn't feeling the same. Every time I banged a beat, I would get in a daze. Overthinking what I wanted to say, can you relate? I when I was growing up, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I'm so indecisive. I've wanted to be a vet. I've wanted to be a graphic designer. I wanted to work at a dog's home. Um, I wanted to be a singer, I wanted to be an actress, like I've literally been like through the spectrum of stuff but I've never been that academic, my attention span is really short. So I loved English and I did my A-level in English as well and in graphics but I kind of don't have an attention span for someone to study for ages and ages but I did always love performing. There's loads of videos on the like camcorder of me putting on shows for my mum and my grandma and my granddad and just used to make them sit there and listen to me rap to the brat or like salt and pepper or sing like loads of alicia key songs and destiny's child songs but i wasn't like the greatest singer and definitely a better rapper than i am a singer <laughs> i'm just trying to do my best trying to live out my dreams with no stress some people left some still in a mess me i'm just trying to do my best the culture that I grew up in really influenced and inspired me generally to, to carry myself in a certain way. I mean, coming from an Iranian household, 
you know, Iran is an Islamic country and my family weren't like religious in that sense. They weren't strict religious, but you know, I have experienced going to the mosque. My mom did teach me the prayers and the strictness and morals around like respecting your elders and um, you know, not drinking and smoking and, and that kind of stuff and not being out so late. And then when I was about 15, 16, I did start to rebel a little bit. So I was quite naughty in school and I was on isolation and off timetable and kept getting risk of being excluded. But, you know, I, I think I saw the trauma I was causing my mum and I kind of just fixed up. But yeah, I feel like I've always carried myself like really respectfully and I try to always do everything with dignity. I've not tried to elevate my career by, you know, exploiting my sexuality or my body, everyone each to their own. But the way I was raised, that's not like a respectable way. And I think that just kind of got ingrained in me. I'm just trying to do my best, trying to live out my dreams with no stress. No stress. Some people left, some still in a mess. Me, I'm just trying to do my best. No stress. When we were at home, we used to have a satellite TV that let my grandma and my granddad be able to watch Persian TV. So there was all these international channels, like Spanish channels and German channels. And I started discovering like rap music, like through those channels. There was a lot of German rap. And I kind of really liked it. There was just something about the musicality and the grittiness, even though I didn't understand a word they were saying. And on MTV Bass, I used to basically put the VHS in the video and record like all of my favourite music videos and then press pause and then record the next one. And then I had loads that were like music video one, music video two. And I just absolutely really loved it. And then when I kind of started seeing my dad again, I would go there every other weekend or so. And then he had a CD collection and I would always sit in front of his hi-fi with headphones on for hours, just listening to his music. And he had like Whitney Houston, Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson, Donnell Jones, Brian McKnight and all the Now collections. And then when I discovered Queen Latifah and Debrat and all these kind of like tomboy rappers that were so strong and really strong females, I absolutely started identifying with them because I was such a tomboy growing up. I was always in dungarees and baggy tracksuits and skating and big t-shirts and stuff. So I suddenly saw myself in them and I felt like really comfortable. Tell me, come, I will pass through. Show up too pretty like a cartoon. Kill a beat too sharp like a harpoon. That your spirit don't know which way to depart to. Spit bars, your half is like rookie. Hit hard, your clutch in your woody. Big star, about to get goody. Get hype in a dress or a all black hoodie. Why are we still living in a world where men degrade females because they got that status? Then we go smash it up. I was just out with like my friends that all seemed to be making music. The boys in my school and college were emceeing, and at uni, even they were emceeing. I dropped out of uni and I was working in Sainsbury's for a year and the, there's so many artists that were working in Sainsbury's at the time that are artists now. So we were always around MCs and musicians like in my area in North London. So I just never stopped writing. We used to go to any area that has a youth club or an open mic. My friends used to take me on pirate radio and really encourage me to get on the mic. I was very shy. I remember going on Heat FM um, several times and then I started dabbling in like the UK hip hop scene. There's never a point where you're like, okay, I'm going to be a rapper and these are my goals and this is what I need to do to do it. I feel like it was a re really like natural progress. I was going to open mics, I was making friends at these events. You start recognising the same people and networking. I was at a workshop doing youth work in Walthamstow when I met MC Angel. She invited me to an event called Lyrically Challenge that she ran. I went there and performed on the open mic. Then she booked me to perform as an artist. I was going there regularly and got close to her. She asked me to then run the event with her. So I started running events. Then we slowly had other girls that were rapping with us and then Angel was like let's make an all-female hip-hop collective for like a year we were like performing and touring together we had an album together and you know I learned so much from MC Angel about confidence on stage about hosting and 
the art of collaboration. I mean, if that didn't happen, I don't know where I would be now. I don't know if I would have still taken this path. And me and Angel are still really close, but we just kind of all started doing our own thing. And then I just took it from there and started having fun and experimenting like with different producers and in the studio. And I would ask my friends, my friends who are really, really good technical rappers, I would send them stuff or ask them for good constructive criticism. And I've always been someone who's good at taking the criticism if I've asked for it. Um, and, you know, they'd be like, you know, think about your syllables or add this or take that away or listen to this song and you'll see how this person raps. And I really, I, it was like, it was like getting schooled. Practice really does make perfect. It's such a cliche, but it really does. This reminds me of a year in my thoughts. Yo, people say I'm killing it and showing me love. Internally, you see, I'm because I know that I'm not. I'm a stranger to my fam and I am missing them not. I just get inspired from if I hear a, if I hear a song that touches me, that moves me or especially a beat, I instantly know that I like a beat. So for me, the beat always drives me to like make good music. I just always wanna make sure that if the beat was removed and if the instrumental was taken away, I am talking sense and every line has to have a meaning or a purpose. There is always a message in my music because I feel like we are responsible for chanting our words into the ether, like into the world. So when people listen to my music, I want them to absorb goodness. I want them to have hope. I want them to have an understanding of what's going on in another social background or I want them to feel like they have the, the fight and the motivation to be themselves and to do them. Hood hippie of the rap scene, who comes better? Bit of Van Summers, tucked under a sweater. Leave exes like he's after my treasure, but I hit him with a hmm, maybe not, nah, maybe never. Give an inch and they take the world. God complex, they don't know how to measure. Do you know what it took for girls to get where we are? Don't tell me about pressure. So, you know, things that I've addressed like Set Her Free is about domestic abuse and, you know, domestic violence. Have a song called Suffragettes, which was celebrating the hundredth year of women having the right to vote and the amazing suffragettes who fought so hard for us to have that and every time i perform that song live i always invite women from the audience to join me on stage like i have to i've never done it without doing that because the song is literally collectively about women standing together and i just feel like it's important i feel like if my music doesn't have a purpose i just really don't want to do it and i feel like that with everything in my life I kind of question myself all the time. I question everything and I'm like, why am I doing this? Who is this serving? Why do I need to make this? What someone gonna take from listening to this song? You know, being a woman in the music industry and especially in rap or grime, just generally women are always judged on their appearance. You will have moments where you want to make sure that someone is rating and respecting your music because your music is really good and not because they like what you look like or that you want to feel safe working with a producer or collaborating with a rapper because they think that you're good and not because they fancy you or want to take you out and there's always these questions that you ask yourself when you're doing collaborative work even doing shows like going to shows you know the way promoters treat you or bouncers treat you you're kind of always weary of it if you go to an open mic or if there's a cypher usually there's like 20 guys and only like two or two or three girls max 
and you feel like you've got to prove yourself even more. What happens when these role models so swallow brothels? Betting in the bookies and the winnings up his nostrils and box the wallies with his hard on up on the tonsils. Baby mother's ringing, electric's not been on still. People's dilate, politicking with apostles, but it's him in an empty bottle on the cobbler of his hostel. Groveling. There's so many obstacles, but there's also a lot of pros as well. You know, this is why I, I created the Queens of Art Tour. I just wanted to balance the gender imbalance in hip hop. Festivals and concerts and getting bookings were just so male heavy and the men were constantly collabing with their friends and their guys and taking them on tour and bringing them out on stage and their audience was growing because of that. And I was like, why aren't we doing it as women? Like we should be doing this. Why don't we take 20 girls or why don't we bring out girls on stage? So I just decided to make it. I calculated what it would cost and what venues we could work with and what women I could book in all these different cities. And I, I um, spoke to someone at the Arts Council and they said that it was a strong application. And really luckily we were awarded the grant and that really helped part fund the tour. It was amazing. And all these women from all over, from Glasgow, Cardiff, Birmingham, Leicester, Bristol, Brighton, Folkestone, London, all these women who didn't even know each other have connected. Their audience have crossed, they're sharing each other's stuff. It was such a beautiful, really long and very hard work, but it was worth it so much. I actually am really proud of all the projects that I've released. Um, I had my first mixtape called A Little Bit of Shady and I had a project after that called Once Upon a City and then I had my debut album which was a figure of speech and then my last album I dropped which was Human Rights. Now to me Human Rights is my best album. I love the songs on it. I think the variation of music, the message, like the technicality in it is better than all my other projects. And um, actually the new project that I'm working on to me is even a, an improvement from that. But human rights, even the artwork for it is just stunning. Um, it's done by a lady called Inky Layla. But my favourite project is actually called Once Upon a City. It was one of the first projects I ever created and it was at the time where I didn't know anything about copyright. I didn't know about collaboration, it was very DIY and it's me, I did a six track EP which was like a dark fairy tale telling the story of two people that loved each other but couldn't be together. It basically was over beats that were already made from a producer called Guts and I just rapped over the beats and engineered them and edited them and put it out so it was just out for free but at the time I had conversations with him and we had dialogue and he had said that he doesn't mind me using the beats and stuff but I couldn't put it out officially so I could never really push it the way I wanted to it's just kind of just sits there online but it's always been my favorite it was just I poured my heart and soul into that The work that I do allows me to be myself. Like I never look off, I'm always shady. Like whether I'm teaching, doing an interview, out, like when you're a rapper, you're you. You're not acting, and you're not playing a character. Like you're just yourself and what you're saying in your songs. And we just get this incredible platform that we're allowed to stand up on stage with the microphone and tell everyone how we feel. I feel like I have a responsibility. I have younger siblings and also the work I do with young people, like I just want to be an example.